Hi everybody! Welcome and thank you so much for checking out my channel. My name is Tani. I am an independent author and somebody who just really loves great stories. So on this channel I talk about writing, books I've enjoyed, and lessons I've learned on my publishing journey. Being an author I obviously love books but I really love stories in all different kinds of formats and as an author I think it's really helpful to kind of explore and identify what makes stories work and I especially love doing that with the stories that I really love and enjoy and the ones that resonate with me the most. And I also just love having an excuse to talk about my favorite things so today I want to start a new video series where I will be talking about the stories that I love and kind of trying to break down why I feel like they work and why they resonate with me the way that they do. I'm going to be talking about stories in like movies and TV shows and video games and those are very different methods for telling a story than a book but I still think that there are a lot of things that you can learn that will translate well to writing books anyways and so I just want to spend some time talking about that and sharing with you guys some of my favorite stories and why I think that they work so well. This is kind of just going to be more of a casual chit chatty discussion when I do these kinds of videos but I do want to at least look at like the characters, the plot, and the world building because as a speculative fiction writer those three elements are really important to me in a story and so I just want to talk about those things specifically and then at the end I might also cover some other things that I feel like are important to mention. So to kick things off today I want to talk about my latest obsession, Our Flag Means Death. If you're not familiar already this is a new comedy pirate show that came out on HBO Max recently. It's very loosely based on historical events and like real pirates from history, specifically a man named Steed Bonnet who was known as the Gentleman Pirate. He was born and raised as an aristocrat and then he ended up running away and just kind of ditching his family to go and pursue a life of piracy in his middle age. It's absolutely my favorite show ever and I just need everybody to watch it. It's fantastic. The first thing that I want to talk about is the characters because for me it was really the characters in this show that made me absolutely fall in love with it. It's a comedy show so a lot of the characters are kind of exaggerated and like overly dramatic but it works really well even though they are over exaggerated characters. There's a level of depth to a lot of them that I feel like is kind of rare for a show like this because really in a comedy show like their only job is to make people laugh and they could have just stuck with that. They could have just gone for you know oh we just want to make a silly show about pirates and make people laugh but there's so much depth to the characters in ways that like makes you genuinely care for them on a deeper level and I really appreciated that. Whoa. I can't believe you made me do this. I have no idea how much I hate it here. Exactly. I don't know. Because you don't tell me anything. Because you're weirdly and freakishly secretive, Jim. No, I'm not. I'm normal. Secretive. And when I think about other stories that I love that are really just there to like provide comedic entertainment and laughs, the ones that have stuck with me the most over years and that like really meant something to me are the ones where the characters were kind of deeper than just surface level and deeper than what you might expect for a comedy story. And somehow I think that like the fact that you do grow to care about the characters so much it almost makes the comedic parts funnier because you care about the people that are involved in those things. There's also a really fantastic emphasis on the relationships between characters and we get to see those grow and develop over the course of the show in a way that was like so much more impactful than I ever could have anticipated when I first went into the show. The main relationship of the story was especially well done and just the way that the two characters complement each other. They each have their own strengths and weaknesses and shortcomings and past history that impacts the way that they do things in the present when we meet them. Each of them is able to provide to the other something that they're missing in their lives or something in their lives that maybe has not been working out so well for them and they both help each other to grow and develop farther and because of that and because of the way that I came to care about those two characters individually as people I just became like very invested in their relationship and really wanted things to work out for them. I was also really invested in the other main relationship of the show for similar reasons. Both of those characters were very distinct and felt very real and we understood what their motivations were and you know kind of their feelings for each other and what each character could bring to the relationship. I loved them. They were adorable and I just became super invested in, in both of those relationships. And then there is a third one as well that 
was more kind of established and maybe didn't get as much screen time, but it was also very cute and I loved all of them so much. There's some really fantastic representation in this show with a whole cast of characters who are LGBTQ and people of color and who come from various socioeconomic backgrounds and so all of those things I thought were handled very respectfully and very well and added depth to the characters. Even a lot of the side characters who didn't get as much screen time, I loved all of them as well. And I think that came down to the fact that they were all just very quickly likable and we knew very quickly kind of who they were and then they were very consistent throughout the show. And so even though a lot of them are just there kind of for a more comedic role, they make you happy, right, to see them on screen doing silly fun things and like I just I loved all of them so much. Another thing that I really loved about the character relationships was the way that all of the crew members on The Revenge kind of came together by the end and it did kind of become like a found family kind of story. When we first meet them, they're not very cohesive as a group and they don't really like that Steed is their captain and they are ready to mutiny on him and just kind of do their own thing. Towards the end of the show, there's a moment where they all really come together and kind of come to Steed's defense. And then later, even after he's gone from the ship, you still see them like working together and like being unified against the new captain who has come in and kind of taken over. But Steed's original crew is all kind of very cohesive as a unit and very together and on board and wanting the same thing and, and working towards that goal together. And so even though most of them are just more minor characters who don't play a huge role in the story and they're not on screen as much, you still get to watch the relationships develop between them and watch them become kind of a, a family and that was really fun to watch. I also really want to talk about the main character Steed because he just meant so much to me and I think that he's a big part of the reason why I have become so invested in this show and so invested in this story. So Steed is like a very kind-hearted person and he ends up going to pursue this life of adventure and become a pirate captain and leaves behind all of his land and his wealth and his family. And the reason that he does that is because he's he's not satisfied with his life as it is. He really kind of has to build this new identity and like rediscover who he is. There's a lot of like identity development for his character that I feel like we don't see very much in stories like this for characters who are older. I mean Steed's like probably in his 40s if I had to guess. And yet in a lot of ways his story feels like kind of an identity development coming of age kind of story that we typically see in stories aimed at a like a teen or a young adult audience. And as someone who is like now in their 30s and just barely went through like a major identity crisis this last year, I just appreciated that story so much and appreciated his character so much. I could really relate to a lot of the things that he was struggling with. As far as like feeling that he didn't belong in his old life and feeling that he had to make a change, those were all things that really resonated with me on a personal level and I feel like probably resonate with a lot of people. Like maybe we don't do something as drastic as running off to become a pirate, but there are still major changes and milestones that we go through like that throughout our lives. It doesn't just happen when you're a teenager. Sometimes that happens when you're older and you have to kind of start over and figure out who you are all over again. But in that development of a new identity and trying to figure out who he is and his place in the world, Seed always very much stays true to who he is as a person. He still remains like very kind and very optimistic and always seeing, you know, the bright side of things or seeing the good in people and trying to kind of like nurture that in people. Hey, I'm your friend. I just really appreciated the development of his character, his discovery of his sexual orientation, his development of this new identity and building a life for himself that he could be more proud of and, and a life that feels more authentic to him. I feel like that is just very aligned with 
the journey that I have been on over the last little while, and so I just really appreciated that part of his character. Now let's talk a little bit about the plot of this story. So a lot of comedy shows like this seem to be very episodic in nature, but really it's not like too much in chronological order and you can kind of just jump in wherever. And in some ways I felt like Our Flag Means Death did a really good job of making each episode feel like its own little self-contained story, but at the same time there was this larger overarching plot that like connected everything together and I just felt like they struck a really good balance between those two things. The plot of the story was also just really well paced. It never felt like there was a dull moment or like we were just kind of killing time. Even some of the scenes that were there and seemed to be just there for like comedic purposes often came up again later and were referenced later or were further developed in order to, you know, bring the plot along and I thought that that was really well done too. The tension and stakes that exist in the plot felt appropriate to kind of a more lighthearted comedy show, but there were also some that were like heavier than I was expecting and I felt like that worked really well, especially in terms of the characters and like character relationships. The personal stakes that were involved in those situations were very meaningful and just enhanced the plot overall. And now I want to talk about the world building because this is something else that I felt like the show did well in kind of a unique way. And the biggest thing that I took away from this was that even though it's a historical piece and it's set in a real historical time period, and even though it's based loosely on real people, they had all of this great source material to draw from and they could have gone in the direction of making it super realistic and super accurate to history but they didn't. They didn't get too bogged down in some of the details and the historical accuracy piece. Even as far as things like time and like how long it takes characters to get from one place to another or how they even transport from one place to another, like it just happens sometimes and that's okay. Like honestly, as I was watching the show, it didn't bother me too much. I didn't really care so much. I was just focused on the story and the characters. I, I don't always care about the little details, especially in a show like this that isn't really meant to be taken too seriously. There's no need to focus on those details and so I think that that's an important lesson that writers can take from this show too is know what it is that you're writing and the tone that you're trying to strike, and sometimes you don't need to put all of the insignificant details in there, even if it's unrealistic, and even if it like doesn't make any sense at all. Like sometimes you just don't need it to make sense, and that's okay. I also really appreciated that the things that they chose to exclude were things that I think would have negatively impacted it. And I guess when I'm saying that I'm specifically talking about the LGBTQ representation in the story and the way that that is received by other characters. This is set in a time period where I'm sure that kind of thing would have been not approved of or that people would have had really negative things to say about it. But in the show itself we don't really see that the characters are just allowed to be who they are and it's accepted and to see that reflected in a story that's set in a historical time period I thought was just really beautiful. I could honestly talk about this show forever and I'm sure that I miss some things and I'll think of more things later that I wish I would have included. But one more thing that I do want to talk about is just the details that were included in the story and the attention to detail throughout. I feel like those things really enhanced some of the underlying themes of the story and really just made it more impactful. There are things like the plant that Steed steals from the fishing boat in the very first episode and if you watch kind of in the background we see that plant grow and like become this beautiful thriving plant where it started out kind of dead looking and sad. There's also the little uh, scrap of red silk that Blackbeard carries that's a very kind of more obvious symbol throughout the show, and the painting of the lighthouse that Steed keeps from his wife. I also really like some of the costuming choices and like specifically like Blackbeard's gloves that are fingerless when he meets Steed but then towards the end of the show after some shall we say devastating things happen, he switches those out and has gloves that are fully covering his hands. Little details like that that seem really insignificant but end up being kind of powerful. I always think those kinds of things are fun to include in a story as a writer 
or as a reader to discover those things as you're reading. And so that was just something else that I really appreciated about the show as well. Honestly, this show is a masterpiece in storytelling and it was not something that I expected going into it. I just wanted to have a fun, silly time with some pirates on a ship. And I got that and that's fantastic. But I also got so much more. The show has my heart forever. I love all of these characters so much. And if I haven't convinced you to watch it already, please consider this my last begging and pleading you to go watch this show and then come back here and leave a comment and let me know what you thought and who your favorite character was. If you have seen this show, I would love to know your thoughts on it and if there was anything else that you took away from it that you think would be helpful for writers. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.